one pivotal moment, I'm in the Lower East Side, I'm in a place called the Yucca Bar, and I'm having a conversation at the bar, talking to this lady. And the thing that really caught my eye was, yeah, she had a good job, but it was on her terms. And so she had the thing of fulfillment as well mm. and passion. She had all those ingredients in. And so I took that time to really just pause. What can I go on a 20 to 25 year run to actually develop a company? And, and so I got a mentor. This is just like executive health. Why don't you just name it executive health? I was like, oh, I could just do that. And then you can have the IO because it's a more of a tech. We can want to do all these things in the world. We have the biggest dreams in the world. We want to have an eight figure business. But if we don't have the energy, if we don't have the cognitive abilities, the resiliency to do it, we are essentially the bottleneck of this entire whole operation and dream. Welcome to the Get Business Savvy podcast. I'm George Black, and I've helped lead 19 companies to over $1 billion in combined revenue. And I'm AJ Bishop, a starting entrepreneur. AJ and I are big advocates on health, wellness, and staying in shape. But how do we do that while we're trying to take our companies to the next level? Well, we've never talked about this on the podcast until today. So we're super excited to welcome Julian Hayes II to the Get Business Savvy podcast. Julian is the founder of Executive Health. He's a hybrid athlete, a wellness consultant, and a columnist at Forbes, and a lot more. So Julian, welcome. How's it going, guys? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Just by meeting you and looking at executive health, this, this topic aligns perfectly with what me and George talk about a lot. Definitely happy to speak about it. On your website at executivehealth.io, you write, quote, my initial journey and dream began in the pursuit of becoming a doctor. However, after one year of medical school and some chance encounters in New York, I left to pursue an even bigger dream, a world where generational health and wealth accompany each other. So Julian, I'd love for you to fill in some of the gaps of your story, especially how did you dream even bigger than medical school? What mm -hmm. happened? Yeah, so I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and medical school was in New York City. And it's quite the difference of places. The energy in New York, I love New York. It has a special place in my heart, and it's just electric. The cool thing also in New York is that when you go out to whether you're going to a bar, whether you're going to Central Park, wherever you go, you're likely to talk to someone who has a dream and they're, you can feel that dream because they're very passionate about it. And for me, I just kept hearing that thing. And even in undergrad, I always had the notion that I could be doing something else, but school was very safe for me. It was very easy. You show up, you take a test, you rinse and repeat, and you move on to the next thing. And there's typically going to be a guaranteed outcome, especially when you're doing something in the medical fields, there's a guaranteed outcome and some guaranteed debt. But that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one pivotal moment, I'm in the Lower East Side, I'm in a place called the Yucca Bar. And I'm having a conversation at the bar talking to this lady. And the thing that really caught my eye was, yes, she had a good job, but it was on her terms. And so she had the thing of fulfillment as well and passion she had all those ingredients in whereas for me i never really just had that just excitement about it i'm like yeah, it's cool and really the cool thing about it was i got a lot of validation from going to medical school and potentially being a doctor i'm first generation in my family so i'm the golden child everyone's giving me accolades and so you like that validation and so that makes you kind of want to stick with it because it's given that reinforcement yeah. and feedback right there so i finish out my year i come back in nashville and when I'm here, it's a, it's a random summer day. And I just, it just hit me again. It's like, I don't think you're going back. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going back. And I was like, I think I, I think I got my passion and I want to go tell everyone. And I was excited to tell everyone and I go tell everyone and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting cheers, accolades, <laughs> confetti dropping like a championship game. <laughs> and I get nothing. I get crickets. I get yeah. a couple of people saying, what happened to you in New York? Do you need to get drug tested? All these yeah. things. I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I'm finally excited about some potential direction. I like really excited. And this is what I get. Yeah. Let me ask you, Julian. So this direction, it's entrepreneurial, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's so, entrepreneurial without me knowing it's entrepreneurial. Okay. Right, right, right. So that's a really common response that you're going on the path uncharted and <laughs> Nobody takes that path. And it's like, you're crazy. I was told, George, what you want to do will never work. Mm -hmm. I did it 
for like 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and there's always going to be that person that says it's not going to work. It's just that I know I'm not going back. So I guess I'll go get a job, go make some money. So I start personal training and uh, I've always wanted to write. So I started learning to write, to practice writing, get my reps in and I got feedback and I was getting taught. So I did a lot of pretty much for over a year before I got published anywhere. My life ethos is all about curiosity and then the question of what's next. And this is kind of what I discovered with health is that one piece comes in. So I get interested in genetics. Then another piece comes in and I get interested in this types of modality and in this modality. And then to kind of fast forward a little bit with the um, executive health, um, after my father passed at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, I had a time to pause. I tried to get back to work and that just wasn't going to happen. And so I took that time to really just pause and to say, what can I go on a 20 to 25 year run to actually develop a company? Because at first it was just about, I'm just trying to make some money to live and go have fun. I didn't really have these things of legacy and family or none of that thing. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about, I just want to go have fun, make a, make a good living. And, and so I got a, got a mentor, got a coaching and I'm at a dinner and I'm talking about what I do and what my company name is. And it's like, Oh, this is just like executive health. Why don't you just name it executive health? I was like, Oh, I could just do that. And then you can have the IO because it's a more of a tech you use a lot more tech. And so that's like a techie. I got into running at this time as well. And that's where little piece by piece of things kept coming in my head. And therefore, and then over the course of time, just piece by piece, I just kept putting different pieces together, whether it's finding different providers, different partners to, um, to kind of build that to fruition. And then, and just like anything, it's still a very dynamic, vibrant, ecosystem that is constantly being molded and evolved on a daily basis now. But um, it takes a lot of in inspiration from uh, a little bit of the hotel space, fitness space, and then um, kind of just music as well. Um, so I, I'm a hodgepodge of a lot of things. When it comes to the health and wellness that you've developed in only, I mean, like in your own life, and then you're launching or have launched into executive health, especially for entrepreneurs business owners, the solopreneurs, that sort of thing. What's what's the philosophy you have on like maintaining good and I'm I'm calling it health or wellness or staying <laughs> fit or eating right or I I think you kind of cover all of that. I'm curious about what's kind of your guiding lights for that. Yeah, it's 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 um it's it's one of my favorite words is sovereignty. It's, it's, it's complete and total sovereignty. And a lot of times we don't use the word sovereignty when we're thinking about health and fitness. It's actually one of the impetus of executive health. Yes, it's for executives, entrepreneurs, business owners, et cetera, et cetera. But the real meaning is to be the CEO of your health and life, first and foremost, okay. to realize that you have much more control than you are let on sometimes and even or maybe that you even heard about through different families. We've all heard that, hey, this runs in our family and you just leave it at that. Well, that's not really true. We have actually much more control over that than than uh, than we're led on, and so I think as a nutshell, it's that word sovereignty. Could you explain what you mean by the word sovereignty? Because um, I think if we do get a few audience members from the UK, but mm -hmm. <laughs> here in the United States, <laughs> that's not a word we are typically familiar with <laughs> or use. Sovereignty is freedom. Uh, that's how I think of it. It's freedom. Um, you can say living life on your own accords, not being controlled, not being boxed in. Um, and I think one way to display that is to have personal excellence, is to have great optimal health. If you think about it, a lot of times as a business owner, we can want to do all of these things in the world. We have the biggest dreams in the world. We want to have an eight-figure business. But if we don't have the energy if we don't have the cognitive abilities, the resiliency to do it, we are essentially the bottleneck of this entire whole operation and dream. And so we're actually boxed in. We have no freedom because our health doesn't allow us. And you can only go as far as your health is going to allow. You can only lead as much as your health is going to allow. Right. Yeah. And, and so that's kind of in a nutshell, what I get around when I think of sovereignty. And also it's taking initiative to take things into your own accords. Um, mm -hmm. We have, we control what we can put into our mouths. We control um, 
moving our bodies every day. We can, we can control the information that we can consume. We can control the relationships that we choose to entertain that mm -hmm. bring us, that bring us bliss or that bring us extra unnecessary stress. We can control even in business, who we choose to do business with, how we choose to do business with. Those are all under our control. And that all comes back to affecting our health in some form or fashion. So I've seen over the years, a number of entrepreneurs, business owners leading very successful businesses. But I think there's this mentality as you're talking, it's occurring to me of, I, you know, I'm just going to have to, you know, can't go to the gym or can't work out. Sacrifice my health is ultimately what they're choosing, but they don't, it's not cognitive like that. Um, so that I can have success. In other words, it's an either or choice. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's, it's just faulty programming and what we've been conditioned to believe. Um, I think that's that's at first because I, I would just ask. I wouldn't say you're wrong or anything. I would just ask questions. Why do you believe that? And then they'll yeah. give me a reason. Okay, where'd you hear that from? Or why do you even believe that? Et cetera, et cetera. And you do that over maybe four to five times, and you get to the really core of just like, hey, I've heard this, or this is my limited view of maybe entrepreneurs that I've seen in my world. I've always said, even this is one of the things growing up because I didn't come from a super healthy family and there's no entrepreneurs in my family. It's mostly blue collar. But if I saw one person do it, then that means I can do it. Because, and that's exposure. And that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I got lucky had exposure. And that's the same thing here. We need to see more entrepreneurs who are doing all these things. We need the spotlight on them and not the people who are, are talking hustle, 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 hustle. I mean, yes, you have to work hard. It's hard being an entrepreneur. It is, it is stressful. It's demanding. Um, sometimes I wonder if I knew everything, what I've stayed in school, who knows? But the point is we need to see more of the people who are actually doing all these things and shine a spotlight on them. Because if you think about it, a lot of times what happens is the people work their tails off. Maybe they get their exit. So you always have to foot the bill with health. Either you pay now, or you're going to have to pay even more later with interest. Right. And and you pay now, you're just paying with time out of your day to go exercise. Whereas down the line, you're going to pay not only with time, but you're going to pay a lot more out of your pocket and you're going to pay a lot more with the emotional costs as well, depending on what's going on. So with those people, the more you put off now, you're going to have to use all that money a little more from the exit to buy back your health that you neglected for maybe a decade. Or even worse, in my case, one of the worst things was not even the physical element. It was more of the emotional toll that it took on everyone around you. Some of the hardest stuff when my father was sick, my grandfather, my aunt, it wasn't even just, it was seeing them in pain, yes, but it was just the effect that it had on everyone else, just from an emotional standpoint. And so I think about that with the entrepreneur, with the family, with the small kids now, but then when that kid gets, when those kids get older and maybe they have kids, you're not able to participate as much as you want in life because of that. So a lot of times we're so focused on the micro because we're just trying to, just to survive. We're trying to keep this business alive, but we have to focus on the macro. Yeah. This is really ties into what I've rebranded and reestablished uh, my company called live truly free. And it ties to your, your vision of sovereignty over your life. Like, you, you know, you have this freedom and what this just plays in perfectly because what we're about is trying to create more freedoms in the life of the entrepreneur. And part of it is if you're struggling in your business, it's like, that's all you can focus on. So if we can get your head a little bit above water and then ultimately a lot above water, then you can, you absolutely can start, um, going into other areas. And I think I, I'm health would be like, gotta be right up there. A lot of this is about mindset and, and, and getting momentum. So if you're on a losing streak, quote unquote, in business right now, and things are just not working well, one of the things that I would think that you would want to do is to find a way to get some wins to start feeling really good about yourself. I, you can't explain it, but it is an energy thing. There's very few things in life that I would be hard pressed to find then I can go do something for 30 to 45 minutes and completely change my entire mood and outlook mm -hmm. on life yeah. Yeah. for free. 
So those people, you don't have to go to the gym. I don't like going to the gym as much. I still go, but I don't like going. So I'm there with you. But we have kettlebells now. We have a park. You have a neighborhood. There's so many things you can do. But to, you can change your entire outlook in life and, and everything in 30 to 45 minutes. It is a mood enhancer. And most of business, a lot of times, is about perspective, especially in the early days when it's, things are a little more nuanced in terms of like, am I progressing? Am I doing well? It's a lot more gray and it's, it's a lot more psychological. And to take care of that psychological, I don't know anything that's better than, act, than movement and exercise. And I think this ties into a lot of what George and I have been talking about recently when it comes to burnout and also when it comes to, you know, facing struggles and creating through disruption. It's about, you know, you need little wins and um, creating sovereignty in your life and creating sovereignty over your personal health, I think is a great way of even no matter what happens in business, no matter what happens in family life. I have sovereignty over my personal health and I can go to the gym, I can watch what I eat and I can make myself feel better. And ultimately getting that little win, I like how you put it, can start carrying into business. And even though you might have losses in your business, you can get wins by just going to the gym. And I'm wondering when you have somebody who hasn't had any wins in the gym for a, a long time, because completely neglected that, Mm -hmm. Where do you start when someone says, hey, I've neglected the health aspect. I don't want to pay for it down the line like you talked about. Where, what do I start with now? Yeah, if this person is in business, I would say, um, you remember, say, say this person is 10 years into his business and he's doing well. I'm like, hey, what was, what was life like you know, when you first started your business and everything? And you didn't, you didn't have the nice house or you didn't even have your, the, the family yet and you didn't have the people to leave. What was like, life like on day one? Don't get to talking and everything. I was like, um, what'd you do those first few days to get to that first client or that? And they started mentioning those things. And I was like, how'd you keep going when um, you, you didn't have no results to show for it? You didn't, you didn't have all the support. Everybody thought she was crazy. And he's like, I did X and X and X. And I was like, oh, let's take that same feeling and apply it to our health on this new health goal. Because a lot of times what made someone successful in business, if they pause for a moment, those same things will make them successful in health. Delayed gratification, discipline, consistency, resiliency. It's the same thing. And the good thing is you can turn around your health a lot quicker than probably building a, a, a super expensive company. Because um, in business, you can only go so fast until the laws of just human nature have to do its thing. Whereas in health... A good 30, 60, 90 days, you can be a different person. Maybe not physically completely yet, depending on what you got to do and all of that. But mentally and everything, you're going to be light years from the person you were at the very beginning. And so the results are going to show up a lot quicker in the world of health than they would in business. So years and years ago, when I was starting out, I was in the family business. And that's, well, I had been running before that. I mean, I, I always like to run. But then it became a necessity because I just had to go blow all the chemicals off from the stress of the family business every day. This was kind of pre-entrepreneur stuff. And, and so it was my release valve. It was just like, get rid. I just knew those. I didn't know what they were. I don't know what they're called, but I just could feel like there's a lot of negative stress chemicals or something going mm -hmm. on. I need to I need to sweat them out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some days I would run faster than others, depending on how hard the day had been. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, I recorded a video recently and I said, and I was talking about exercise for me now. And I was like, most days now ex exercise is really just like a way for me to exfoliate a lot of frustrations and, and, and <laughs> bad energy away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. So I love everything you're saying about this stuff, but we also like to get practical. You know, mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to give the listeners something they could start doing literally. Well, wait till after the podcast, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some some actions they can take. And, and, you know, granted, everyone's at all kinds of different levels and things like that. Dr. Hayes, do you have some prescriptions for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so this might not be as this might not be as sexy and popular. And I'm also going to assume that your uh, listeners and viewers are not just absolutely lazy couch potatoes. So they're, they're not. Um, I don't think um, this, these types of viewers would be people where I got to say, hey, man, just just five minutes of activity today. You can do it. Just get off the couch. You can right, do it. Right. So we're, we're going to skip all that stuff. You, laziness is not a thing here. I would first start. I love starting with the mind. 
I love, love, love starting with the mind and getting your mind right. So the first thing is I would really start to form your personal wellness company. And this is what I mean by that. If I ask any of your viewers all the times, hey, what's your what's your mission in your business? What's your values in your business? They'll they'll rat it off easily, right? And I'm like, what's your goal with your health in five years? What's your goal with your health in 25 years? What do you want to do when you're 85 years old? How do you look and feel? And they're like, oh, I just want to feel good. I'm like, if I said that about business, I just want to do well. What does that mean? There's not a lot of emotion in that. There's barely even any logic in that. So how can we combine logic and emotion? Because that's what really gets us. And so one, let's establish your mission statement, your vision for what your health is. What's your personal health philosophy? Optimal health is different for me probably than most people because I like to do certain things compared to the other person. Right. So our visions are going to be different. We're both still going to be healthy, but it's going to look a little different. Just like a lot of companies, they both want to be profitable, but how you get that profitability, it's going to be a little different. Some people are volume. Some people are a little more bespoke and, you know, doesn't need as much clientele. And now let's, what's our values? What's your philosophy? So here's an example for me. If I'm traveling, I don't like to have two bad meals in a row because it throws me off my game. It gets me out of my habit. So doing that little rule right there helps me still enjoy some things, but it doesn't go too far because I know myself psychologically. And I'm, I'm usually, um, once I get going, I have a hard time stopping with like pastries and stuff. So I need to put some, <laughs> yeah. So I need to put some rules in there. Another one is every single day I have to do at least 10 to 20, 10 to 20 minutes in the spiritual gym. And I got this from my mentor. He was like, Julian, you love going to the physical gym, working out your muscles, but you got a muscle up here as well in your head and you're not working that out enough. So every day get in the spiritual gym as well to work your mind out. So that can be meditation. That can be visualization. So that's the first thing is to really lay this foundation out. Next, I want you to do an audit of yourself just to see where you stand right now. And there's different levels of auditing, depending on how detailed you want to go. The deep, the highest level, maybe, maybe you want to do a bunch of extensive testing. Maybe you want to go to your doctor, get some blood work and get that all checked out, see where you stand. Or you can do something basic now and say, Hey, how much am I lifting right now? How much am I exercising right now? How's my nutrition right now? Look at some of these key categories. How's my sleep right now? How's my exercise? You know, how's my personal relationships? Check these things out. Now, I want you to pick one of the pressing needs, the most pressing one. And that's the one I want you to focus on immediately right now. Most people have a hard time saying, I'm just going to tackle it all. I'm going to start exercising seven days a week for one hour. I'm going no sugar. I'm going to bed at 10 o'clock. Very few people can go cold turkey if they had a lot of those habits. If you can, kudos to you. But most people, probably not. So I want you to pick one of the big pressing needs. Now, you have your schedule. You have appointments on there. I want to know where is appointments for you to take care of you, first and foremost, mm -hmm. to yeah. be intentionally selfish. So I want you to get your calendar and make appointments for yourself. Maybe that's the first um, hour in the morning to, to do the spiritual gym and to get some exercise in, or maybe it's in the middle of the day and it's going to be like halftime for you. It's a time for you to check in with yourself. And it's also a time to get your exercising in. It doesn't matter where you get your right. activity in, but make sure you schedule it. Also think about things, like I said, the spiritual gym as well. Those were, I would say probably the big ones right there is getting organized. Cause a lot of times I think we want to jump into things and just start doing a bunch of things. And over time, what that does is, it's going to cause um, a collision, a friction between our business life, personal life, and our health life, because they're not seem they're not synergistically, symbiotically together. So they're going to butt heads. This is all the New Year's folks out there, and right. why they're not doing it after February because they're just gung ho day one, no plan. Life's not going to slow down for us. Business is not going to slow down for us. So just like in our business with our health, let's get organized. Let's slow down first. And then we can speed up. So that sounds a, very similar to creating a next level navigator for your personal health, George. 
It does. Yeah. <laughs> so what what are you hearing in all of this, AJ? Approach your health like your business. The the concept of sovereignty, I think, is perfect. And um, as you've been talking, I'm seeing how I've done a lot of this stuff, but I haven't necessarily thought through it all. But thinking of your health as your its own entity that you are responsible for the success of just as you are of your business, just as you are of your family. To an entrepreneur, that should be a, a seamless way of thinking about your health because now that gives you the competitive framework to, okay, I can go get wins over there. That's another another place that I can go succeed. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm just loving the concept. And it, it, like you said, it's not, you don't need to do everything all at once, just getting started, starting slow and then growing it as you go, just like any other business, again, for people to apply their business knowledge to their personal health. Well, Julian, this has been super thought provoking. I'm just churning with ideas. <laughs> so I hope everybody else is too. Where can people go to connect with you and find out more? Yeah, the home base is executivehealth.io. You'll see everything there. I have a podcast and a YouTube and it's the same name. It's Executive Health and Life and you'll be able to see information there as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this conversation. So we'll have all those links down in the show notes below. And while you're checking out those links, grab a spot in our free webinar, the Exponential Growth Webinar, because that's where I'm going to share some stories and techniques on how I help lead companies to huge growth and how you can lead your company to huge growth. And check out this video right here. I know you're going to love it. And in the meantime, may you live truly free.